In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about drawing the uh, graph of a derivative given the original function. So, let's take f here for instance. First thing we would look for is any place where the derivative is zero. That's going to be where the function goes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So we see that we have two of those points and that's the first thing we're going to mark on the plot of our derivative. One there and let looks like it's about right here because we know that the derivative is zero at those points it's going to help us sketch this. The next thing that we're going to do is we want to notice where the derivative is increasing, decreasing, and increasing. So increasing here means we'll be above the x-axis, decreasing so below, and then increasing again back to being above the x-axis. So we know that our graph is going to be up here, down here in between the zeros, and up here. Now past that we just want to get an idea of what's going on. So one thing we might do is we might use a ruler to get an idea of what our slope is right here. So let's pick a couple of points on this slope and see if we can get a rise over a run. So I'm going to pick a point there. I want to make them as easy as possible. All right, so you can see those two points I marked there. We're going down one, two, three, four to go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got roughly a, a rise over run of about four sevenths and it's negative and I was picking roughly this point here because that's where it seems to be decreasing the quickest. So at that point, the derivative at that point, we'll call it A, looks to be about, and it's negative because it's decreasing, about negative four sevenths. I just looked at the slope between this point here and this point here that uh, were easiest to find via my ruler. So what that tells me is at that point as I come down here that's going to be the lowest my derivative gets because that seems to be where it's decreasing the fastest so it's going to have the smallest value or the most negative value and now I've got an idea of what my derivative is going to look like. Now I see here that my graph is concave up so my rate of change should be increasing here so it's going to look something like this. And over here, I'm concave down, so I expect my derivative to be decreasing. So something like a parabola. Now, we can get more exact by calculating more rates of change, and sometimes we'll want to do that to be a little more accurate. But right now, I just wanted to get the idea of what it's going to look like. Let's try another one that doesn't have any zeros. So G, we notice, doesn't have any place where it changes direction. So G is not going to have any place where the derivative is zero. And on the interval that we see, it's decreasing the whole time. So that means it's always going to be underneath the x-axis. What we do see is that it's got a decreasing rate of change. Or excuse me, it's got an increasing rate of change. It's concave up. So we do expect our derivative to be increasing. So the place where it's going to be most negative is over at this end. And if we look at that slope right there, it's very similar to the slope here, right at this point. So I'm going to say that maybe about right here. And now what's going to happen is now the slope is going to get closer and closer to zero, but never quite touch zero. And it's going to continuously make that pattern. So I'm going to have a graph that's going to do something like this. Okay. Whenever we're drawing by hand, it's gonna, you're always going to have a little issues with curves. But we're going to have something that is most negative here, because that's where our slope is the steepest. And as it goes on, our slope, or our derivative, is going to get closer and closer to zero. So those are just a couple examples of drawing a graph of the derivative given a function.